up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we are going to be taking on sincero's marsh ex1 uh, but just before we do that i do want to touch on all the dungeons so sort of early on i do like to just heavily farm disa's cave build up a solid amount of legendary gear um, and then once you've done that i'll start to just focus and put all my resources and buy, obviously, we need to buy stamina every single day and put that into Sincero's Marsh. The Terra Dome, I just touch. I don't really focus too heavily on it. Um, you seem to just build up prototypes pretty easily just from the three stamina that you get daily. So definitely focus more on Sincero's Marsh because empowering your commanders just will bump up the stats and help you with progression so much. On your account so sincero's marsh ex ex1 this is the team comp that we're rolling with we've got orthan botmark miranda um ravener and anpu it's actually really really important where you place your heroes so obviously we want orthan to be up front because he's going to be um tanking everything but Mark, he, the, it doesn't really matter where he goes, but the reason he's here is because Ravenar and Ampu, we need them both at the back because they need to target the eggs and spiderlings. Um, Ampu, I put top left corner because he will reach the spiderlings at the top left. And then Ravenar, um, usually Ampu is going to be doing a lot more work for the fight. Um, he'll be popping off a lot more with his ultimate, doing that AoE damage. Uh, and then Ravenar will um, like sort of hit down at the bottom corner. And then Miranda, you want her here because then she's going to get her shield around as many people as possible. So for the commander, of course, we're going to be using Grace. She's the best for this, doing all that AoE damage that she does. Um, then for prototype, I like to use Dark Summit. Um, every time an assassin or a hunter, so we've got bot mark. Um, so every time he does a crit, he has a um, he will have a 30% chance to inflict bonus damage equal to his HP and 360% of his attack. That is huge. So that you know helps speed up the run, helps us do more damage. Uh company hero is great as well. So um for our tanks, the next normal attack cast by the allied tank shall restore 0.5% of their max HP and inflict bonus damage equal to 1% of their max HP every four seconds. That is going to help massively with healing. It's going to help Miranda keep Orthan alive. And again, it's just going to bump up our damage. The Scholar's Monument. So whenever an allied hero sustains a critical hit from the enemy, all heroes shall recover 1.4% of their max HP. This effect can only occur every three seconds. That is that is like the most broken thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know, just constantly getting extra healing throughout the entire fight. So let's go for it, guys. And I'm not going to lie to you. You might, it might, you might wipe on the first wave. It just depends where the spiling spawn. So hopefully um, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, so we're going to go full ham. Let's whack in all that stamina. And... There's a lot of manual in this. Uh, so we've got Miranda, Anpu, and Ravener all on manual. So with Miranda, we just want to time her ultimate when the eggs or spilings come up. And just going to time that now. So that's perfect. There's Anpu. Yep, he's hit those spilings. Perfect. And Ravener, take out the, um, the spiders. And if you want as well, one thing that's not great about Miranda is I think automatically she doesn't target everyone. So we actually want to make sure that Orthan is in the shield as well. He's getting some love. And because there's no eggs or spiling at the moment, I'm just going to use Ravener to do some more damage to the boss. There we go. Perfect. And yeah, Anpu literally hitting everything in sight. And there we go. Popping off again. And let's just bring up the graph. So 
Shield first, Ravenar, then Anpu. And yeah, there we go. Spiderlings down. But yeah, Anpu is massively going to be doing the most damage here. And we're just going to save our ults for... Yep. Yeah, just going to get rid of the bar graph so I can make sure that I do see those Spiderlings and don't miss anything. And again, we're just going to hold on to that ult. Okay, so because Anpu's up, I'm just going to use Ravenar and save Anpu for the eggs and the spiderlings. Just going to wait a second. Nope. There we go. That's perfect timing. And obviously timing is everything in this. Just want to make sure that we don't, you know, you don't want to be caught short. You don't want to be caught with your trousers down uh, and, you know, miss these eggs or the spiderlings. And Ravenar is going to be up any second now. There we go. So let's use Ampu's ult. Take out these spiderlings here. Put on that big fat shield. And one of the things that's great about this as well is that with Orthan, if he does go down, you know, he can self-revive. So as long as you can get to sort of say 50, 40%, you know that you can easily win this fight. And Anpu coming in again, got both those ults up. And usually around here, they do do like some big wave of spiderlings. Maybe, maybe it's not going to happen today. Okay, let's 14%. Let's just go ham. Let's just take out the boss ASAP. And just going to wait just in case. I don't want to wipe. We don't want to fall at the last hurdle. And those eggs, if they pop off, you will wipe. So you do need to focus the eggs as like a priority. And there we go. And that's all she wrote. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. And let's just look at the damage. So uh, Anpu 20 mil. Uh, he is probably the best built on the account. Um, Botmark coming at 14 mil. Like Botmark is just insane. I don't have another energy hero on the account that does as much damage. So obviously I'd rather have three energy heroes for this fight, but because I don't have that someone solid, that's why I bring in bot mark single target here, but just doing insane damage on the boss. Orthan and Raven are both doing 10 mil. Um, yeah. Orthan, he is just so broken, insane damage. Um, you know, he's doing insane damage. He's also bringing crowd control and he tanks. He just does it all. Um, and the other thing here as well is like, so when you get to EX1, we've got 75% chance to get um, mythical commanders. And that has gone from 50% to 75%. So it's huge. It's a huge boost. Um, and we like, like I said, I'm going to be farming um, commanders all day long. So I want to try and get my commanders to level 50 as soon as possible. And you see here, you know, to get to 45, we need eight. To get to um, 50, I'm going to need 16 copies. So it's 24 copies in total. That's a lot. So it's probably going to take me two weeks to do that. But once you've done that, if we just have a look at the guild, go to technology. Um, you can see here that we unlock this class technology when a triple SS commander gets to level 50. So yeah, definitely want to be holding off onto that for now. So let's look at the build. So we'll start with bot mark. Um, he is um, immortal plus three. For the gear, we've gone for triple um, crit, crit rate, which is sun signet. And that's given us a huge amount of crit rate. So we've got 55% crit rate, 50% uh, crit damage and then 16k attack so very very well built on the account substats we're looking for crit damage and um attack it's a bit of a shame uh, of course we want crit damage on the gloves hopefully soon i should be able to swap these out for some um a legendary gear get some extra stats um obviously attack percentage on the boots and the helmet as well massively bumping up our um attack and Pooh is so well built on my account so he's a mortal plus one um he's got 
plus two awaken. Um, I think you could get he doesn't need to be awaken. Obviously, potential helps, but for this fight, I feel like you could definitely get away with him not being to that level. Um, a mortal plus one is probably the minimum he needs to be. So we do have one tampered piece of gear, and that is massively bumped up his stats so we went from 15k attack to 25 so that's a 10k jump for having one piece um of tampered gear it is just insane um but that's what it does so yeah he's really well built so we've got um two pieces of hero and then we've got one piece of hawkeye for that accuracy and you do need some accuracy landing that stun is amazing for all kinds you know it's great for waves it's great for the spiderlings it's great for campaign it is just such a good ability so substats we're looking for are um, attack percentage hp and accuracy damage reduction is also great on him um on the gloves we've gone for attack percentage attack percentage on the helmet and attack percentage on the boots you could go for accuracy on the helmet but you know i just want as much damage as possible and yeah he is an absolute boost ravenar um so she has she's um immortal um she is she got plus two awakening again i don't feel like she needs the awakening for this um gear we have we're in a broken set at the moment i'm in the middle of trying to get her to have um burst so when that happens this again is going to really boost boost things on the account for her so ideally you want a burst on her if not triple triple crit rate um even overload as well is good on her as well again like any sort of damage dealer you want crit rate you want crit damage you want um attack percentage of course crit damage on the gloves attack percentage on the helmet and attack percentage on the boots then so and then yeah next on the list is orthan so he's already a legendary um he is just god tier even if he was you could probably have him at even i don't know he was such a hardcore carry for me even at epic plus one he was seriously doing work i reckon you could be that cheeky and get away with him just being epic epic one and he would still be able to do this um yeah his he still had a lot of hp when i was doing this um so we've gone for triple vigorous hp is insane on him so of course we want as much hp as possible Gives him survivability and that damage as well. Uh, substats, we're looking for accuracy, HP, and damage reduction. And then we've got HP percentage on the gloves, on the helmet, and then damage reduction on the boost, on the boost, on the boots. Um, so damage reduction is great. It's going to help you be really, really tanky and take hits in pvp and pve so that's why i decided to swap out his boots from hp to damage reduction a whopping 633k hp and 25 percent damage reduction um yeah he's just so tanky and yeah just i don't i absolutely love him just like one of my favorite heroes at the moment miranda she's one freaky chick um she is so good but i just hate the way she looks just i just i think to be honest it's not really her it's more about she has this robot that floats behind her i just think it looks weird just not a fan not a fan so for gear we've gone for vigorous um obviously we want her to have hp then we've also got hawkeye on her as well for accuracy so she can land debuffs uh, substats we just want hp damage reduction and accuracy so that's the substats we're looking for hp percentage on the gloves um, accuracy on the helmet and then hp on the boots 
And maybe we've gone a little bit uh, overkill on the accuracy, 146, and then 337 um, HP. Um, her exclusive, very, very low. Um, and like, yeah, even with the talents, I've not... I, <laughs> I'm struggling to um, get these soul potions, the talent potions. So definitely sort of hold the out for these. And, you know, she is carrying pretty hard on the account. Even I'm starting to use her more than Serena or Serena. So Serena, you know, she was my bread and butter and I've moved away from her. And we're starting to use Miranda a lot more. So she is a solid, solid carry. And even without all these talents, she is... She's still doing a lot of work for us. Yep, so that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure to smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.